James Braddock was a young up-and-coming boxer with a string of impressive victories, many of which were punctuated by spectacular knockouts. After only three years, he had earned a shot against the great light heavyweight champion, Tommy Lugren. But Lugren made Braddock look like he didn't even belong in the same ring. At this stage in his career, Braddock was a crafty power puncher, varying his targets and angles and letting one punch set up the next. But Lugren masterfully frustrated Braddock at every turn, shutting down his offense with long guard tactics. and slick offline jabs. That night, Braddock was introduced to the concept of stick and move, and it was a lesson he would never forget. Braddock was soundly defeated, but Lugren told reporters afterwards, if that kid ever learns how to jab, he's going to be champion. His words would prove to be prophetic. However, it would be a long, hard road to get there. Soon afterwards, Braddock would break his hand in a bout. His doctor informed him that he would need to re-break it in order to set it correctly. But Braddock couldn't afford that, so he broke his own hand on purpose during his next fight, then went back to the doctor immediately afterwards. Braddock needed to heal, but like many people at the time, he simply didn't have the money to take time off of work. So he fought, and he lost, and lost, and lost, until finally, he was forced to retire. And believe it or not, this is when Braddock's luck began to take a turn for the better. Braddock's new job allowed him time to heal, and actually actively strengthened his hand. Knowing nothing about this, a young up-and-coming fighter by the name of Corn Griffin challenged the retired Braddock to a bout. In Braddock, he was hoping to get an easy fight from a well-known name, the best of both worlds. Braddock accepted on just two days' notice, and then proceeded to knock the young knockout artist out. Now Braddock was back in contention, and after tearing through two more top fighters, he landed himself a shot at the heavyweight title. Braddock had become a national hero almost overnight, with many who were down and out from the Great Depression relating to the boxer who had somehow made a miraculous comeback. Braddock had had to stand in the welfare lines just as they had. He had struggled and fought to feed his family just as they had. And now he was proving to them that although they needed help now, it was only temporary. Maybe if Braddock could find his way back, they could too. But although Braddock had given people hope, to many, he didn't have a hope in the world. Because to fight for the title, Braddock would have to face heavyweight champion, Max Baer. One thing the Hollywood movie about Braddock got very wrong was portraying Max Baer as a heartless monster. Baer was an inspiration to his people during a dark time in their history. And those who knew him considered him a kind and decent man. In fact, Baer was a little too kind, to the point that his financial advisor had to take charge to stop him from giving all of his money away to the needy. But one thing that the movie did get right was that Max Bear was f***ing terrifying. Bear had an insane overhand that sent several elite boxers flying into the canvas. If his opponents managed to duck away, Bear would follow up his overhand with an equally devastating lead hook or uppercut. Pretty much the opposite of the dragonfish combo in Hajime no Ippo. On top of that, Bear had an iron chin, 
and was happy to take a punch to give a harder one back. Betting correctly that his cannon of a right arm could end the fight. Despite this, Bear could actually outbox an opponent when he needed to, and had decent defense when he cared to use it. Great clinch work, and a developed cross guard kept Bear safe if the fight went into the deeper rounds. And it was these tactics that allowed him to conserve energy in between his sporadic barrages of pure berserker rage. Like a video game character slowly building his power bar, Bear would suddenly explode into action as if he were unleashing his Devil Trigger or Spartan Rage. It's not hard to see why no one expected Braddock to have any kind of chance. That is, except for Braddock himself, who told the press, when you've been through what I've had to face in the last two years, a Max Bear or a Bengal Tiger looks like a house pet. He could come at me with a cannon or a blackjack, and he would still be a picnic compared to what I've had to face. The night came, the bell rang, and it became apparent right away that this fight would not go according to script. Braddock remembered his painful loss to Lugren, and now he planned to use that loss against Bear. In other words, Braddock would do to Bear what Lugren had done to him. First, Braddock constantly played with distance, stepping in and out just at the edge of Bear's reach to keep him guessing. With Bear unable to establish the correct distance, he couldn't set himself well enough to throw his wild haymakers with any accuracy. And since Bear was forced to reach with his punches, Braddock had more than enough time to evade and counter. Second, Braddock circled outside away from Bear's titanic right hand. Braddock would only reverse directions to open up lines for his own shots. Then he would quickly return to his game plan. Perhaps even more importantly than avoiding Bear's right hand, Braddock's plan of moving to his right allowed him to win the War of Jabs. Braddock would slip his head safely outside to avoid Bear's lead, while intercepting with his own. In this way, he could split Bear's jab. Again taking away from his experience with Lugren, Braddock was patiently, methodically controlling the distance with good footwork and a nuanced, well-developed lead hand. What's more, Braddock was building on that success sliding outside to follow up with hard, looping rights that circumvented Bear's guard. But Bear was still dangerous, and each time he threw his monstrous right hand was another moment that Braddock could lose the fight in an instant. But Braddock had come prepared for this too. To avoid Bear's right, Braddock would actually do the opposite of most people's instincts and move towards the danger. Braddock worked his head to Bear's left shoulder, shielding himself from any follow-up rights and giving himself the room he needed to land counter blows himself. By ducking in to smother the right, Braddock left Bear no room to put power into his best weapon. And since Bear tended to unpin his feet and throw his entire body into his shots, he ended up bouncing off of Braddock's more stable base when Braddock ducked in low. Alternatively, Braddock could continue circling away and shoot out his lead hand. Known as a leverage block, this defense disrupts a wide array of angles from long range blows. With the right hand neutralized, 
or neutralized as much as humanly possible against someone like Bear. Braddock only had to worry about Bear's clinch work and wrestling tactics. So against Max's savage uppercuts from the clinch, Braddock turned away completely. Keep in mind that looking away from your competitor is always dangerous, but Braddock was able to keep track of Bear's movements by the tactile sensation felt through clinching and years of experience. A more aggressive grappling tactic that Bear used to set up his right was to frame against an opponent's head. But when Bear tried to use frames to control Braddock's posture and block his sight, Braddock simply refused to play that game. He backed away until he found the right moment, then rebounded back in to take advantage of Bear's open left side. After 12 tense rounds of narrowly avoiding fight-ending blows, Braddock finally felt comfortable pressing the action. His outside slip jabs turned into hooks, inviting longer exchanges that gave him more chances to follow up or counter. By the 14th, Braddock was countering Bear's aggression with huge overhands. With 14 rounds in the book, Braddock had dominated the entire fight, with Bear able to land little but occasional body shots at short range. But Max Bear was still Max Bear, and all it took was one shot for him to put Braddock down for good. With so many rounds in the bag, all Braddock had to do to pull off the impossible was survive one more round. But of course, Bear was determined to not let that happen. He relentlessly pushed forward, hoping to land that one big shot that would end Braddock's Cinderella comeback story. While boxers then and now often confidently showcase a multi-round lead by staying at long range and dancing away, Braddock wisely realized that the best approach against Bear was to infight in this same spirit. And it worked. Almost. With only 30 seconds left in the round, Bear landed a short, sharp right off of a frame. Braddock was forced back, and Bear pressed forward, landing some hard swings that only just grazed Braddock. But Braddock maneuvered back into close range, and then weathered the storm, until the bell sounded the end of the fight. Immediately, the two embraced, all eminosity gone in an instant. The ref took the microphone and announced Braddock the new heavyweight champion of the world. And the belt passed from one inspirational fighter to another. The newspapers the next day read, James Braddock makes fairy tale come true. Cinderella Man climbs to boxing's peak. I'm the kind of person who always looks for lessons in stories like this. And for me, Braddock can teach us two very important things. First, sometimes we need to give up the things that we want the most, even if only temporarily. I gave up on my dream of having a career in the entertainment industry and that ironically led to me having a career in the entertainment industry, just in a vastly different way than I expected. The same happened to Braddock, who when all was said and done, really just needed time to heal. Physically for sure, but also probably mentally as well, as he needed time to get over his loss to Lugren. And I think the second important thing that Braddock can teach us is to learn from your mistakes. His decision to use what he learned in his loss against Lugren against Bear shows an incredible sense of growth and acceptance, especially when it would have been easy for Braddock to make excuses, like saying that Lugren just ran the entire time and didn't put up a real fight. Instead, Braddock chose to be better. And because of that, we're still talking about it 
almost a century later. If you'd like to up your own game, you can check out my books on footwork, power, and aggressive defense. From the Modern Martial Artist, this has been David Christian, wishing you happy training.